As we go into the word, why don't we pray? And by now, I know you know the prayer. We're going to pray for those of you that have heard me speak before. Um, but we're going to pray a prayer which is taken from Psalm 119, verse 18. So let's just bow our hearts for one minute. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why don't you say these words after me? Oh, Lord, open my eyes that I may see wondrous things out of your word. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. The Holy Spirit helps us to see what's in the word. So, have you ever, when we think about the Easter story, have you ever put yourself in the picture? Have you ever imagined that on the Friday, this man that they thought would be the Messiah, this man that they thought was going to bring hope to Israel, this man that had healed people, in fact, he had raised the dead, he had driven out demons. All of these things, we see it in the scripture. Jesus had done these wonderful things. And then suddenly, on Friday, he is killed. Not just any kind of death, but actually, he is beaten. His body is really bruised. A crown of thorns is placed on his head. And he's hung on a cross. The most shameful death anybody could die. And on Friday, this person that was going to be the hope, the one that they thought would do all of these great things, he's actually dead. He's gone. Can you imagine if you were there? If you were one of the disciples? If you were one of the women that went around with him? How would you have felt on that day? It looked like all hope was gone. The Bible tells us that some of the women who used to go around with Jesus, when he died on the Friday, they checked to see how he was, you know, laid in a tomb, and then they decided, we're going to come back, and we're going to anoint his body. And the Sabbath was the Saturday, so they didn't go on Saturday, but they were going then on the Sunday, and that's where we're going to read. There are two main things I'm going to be saying today in the time that we've got. The first one is that Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen? Amen? Jesus is alive. There are some that still argue that maybe he didn't rise from the dead, but hallelujah, Jesus is alive. So we pick the story up in Matthew 28. Join me then in Matthew 28. It should come up as well. So after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake. So this has happened before they came there. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Wow. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Hallelujah. That's a response to a reason, Savior. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Hallelujah. He's not here. He has risen, just as he said. He tells us that there was an earthquake. Something happened over the course of the night that, that 
kind of disarmed all that the Bible talks about principalities, powers, you know, the power of death. Jesus went to the grave and he defeated all of that and he came up as a triumphant king and he reigns forever. It reminds me, when I was preparing this, it reminded me of parts of the song we used to sing. The ground began to shake, the stone was rolled away, his perfect love could not be all. Overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated forever. He is glorified forever. He is lifted high forever. He is reason he is alive he is alive yeah jesus is alive he is alive amen he is alive many argue sometimes is jesus really alive some say that the disciples stole his body some say the authorities stole his body you know some say maybe he didn't really die he fainted but the tomb is empty. Amen. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians 15, it says this. This is Paul speaking. He says, now brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. Now listen to the gospel. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Amen? That he was buried. That he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And then he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. Paul was declaring Jesus is alive. And not just that they thought he was alive, but that he physically appeared to people. The Bible even says that he ate food. If he was a ghost, he wouldn't have been able to eat. He ate with them. I think God knew that some people would argue that Jesus is not alive, so he made sure that there was evidence of his resurrection that we could actually see. Jesus is alive. Mark 16, 19 says, after the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. He seated at the right hand of God. It's no more that Jesus on the cross. You know, we, we use the cross to kind of remember as a symbol. But I always say, why not the tomb? Why do we always use the cross? Why don't we use the empty tomb? Because that's the victory, isn't it? Yes, he went to the cross, but actually if there was no empty tomb, we're not going to be any different from any other religion. It is the empty tomb that is our victory because it tells us that Jesus has defeated death and because he defeated death, we also, through him, yeah. we've defeated death. Amen. And we will live and reign with him. Amen. Look at what he says in Revelation 1, 17. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I died. But look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death. So first thing. Jesus is alive. Amen. If you've been doubting, maybe you're here today, maybe you don't yet know Jesus, and maybe you've been thinking, mm, this Christian faith is a bit dodgy, you know, I'm not quite sure about this whole idea of somebody rising up. Can I say to you, even evidence, they have physical evidence that Jesus is alive. He reigns, and the fact that he lives in our heart today is even the greatest proof that Jesus is alive. Amen. Second thing, resurrection power has been unleashed for our benefit. So I titled this message, Resurrection Power Unleashed, because, because Jesus died, something has shifted. 
It's not just that we know in our head that Jesus died. It's great to know that, but so what? So what? He died and so what? What does that mean for us? When you unleash something, you set it free. You set it loose, yes? You set something in motion a lot of times forcefully. When you say, if unle- you know, a tsunami was unleashed, you're talking about a force being unleashed. You can't control it. You can't tame it. When Jesus died, something happened when he was resurrected because the power of God is at work in our world today. Amen. In Philippians 3.10, Paul says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Yes, the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings. So there is power in Christ. You know, I was thinking about this thing, this power, what is, you know, I know him and the power, what is that? But you know what? The Bible tells us in Romans 8 that the Spirit of God raised Jesus from the dead. So when we talk about the power of the resurrection, we're talking about the Spirit of God living in us. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says, lives in us. It lives in us. The same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Yeah, that just came out. I didn't think. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth. I don't the words, Bali. Lives in me. Lives in me. That's the power that lives in us. Amen. Amen. So, what does this look like? Resurrection power has been unleashed. We could talk about many things. You know, the hardest thing is to preach on Easter Sunday because there are so many juicy passages. There's so much. You sit there and you think, ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, it's tough. It's tough to preach on Easter Sunday. Yeah. And even tougher when you have to preach for a shorter time, you're thinking, (laughs) what will be the key one? All right, but I'm going to just talk about three things. Yes, so resurrection power has been unleashed. What does that mean for us? One, salvation. Hallelujah. Salvation, yes, because Jesus is our Savior. The Bible says in Matthew 1, 24, 1, she will give birth to his son. You will call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Yeah? Yeah? Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. That is the penalty for sin. What is sin? Sin started way back in the garden, yeah? When Adam and Eve chose to leave their own way, not to obey God, but to do what they wanted to do. So Eve ate the fruit that God had said, do not eat this fruit. And suddenly there was a divide between us and God. Before that... God would come and commune with them in the garden. It was all good. But sin brought separation. And the Bible says that the wages, what that means is that what you receive for sin is death. So death is not just physical death. It's also being separated from God. But it tells us in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So when Jesus went to the grave, he has made a way for us to be saved from sin. Romans 4.25, he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Can we read that together? It's a powerful scripture. Let's read it together. Let's go. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Wow. So if justification sounds like a big, big word, to be justified to be, is to be put in right standing with God. That's a simple way of saying it. So Jesus went to the cross for our sin, but notice there, For us to get that right standing, he had to rise from the dead. Remember, they had sacrificed before. Things dying was not new. In the Old Testament, they would have lambs and things that they would sacrifice to atone for sin. So that was not unusual. Jesus being the Lamb of God and hanging on a cross, that was different but not quite unusual because he was paying for sin. But Jesus rising from the dead, ah, now that's different. There was no lamb that was ever killed in the Old Testament that rose again. Well, if it did, I think the priest would have legged it from that place. You know, like, all right? None of them came back to life. But Jesus was different because he's the perfect lamb of God. Amen. So Jesus delivered us from sin. 
Salvation is found in him. The guilt of sin is gone when he cleanses us with his blood. The dominion of sin is gone when the Holy Spirit comes and sanctifies us. The presence of sin will be gone when we are taken away from this world. But ultimately, all the consequences of sin will be gone as we reign with him in a new way in our body. So God has delivered us. Now, when we talk about salvation, a lot of times we focus just on sin. But do you know the salvation package also includes healing? Healing for our bodies. Amen. 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 Look at this scripture. Let's read this scripture. 1 Peter 2.24. Let's go. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? It's something personal. Yeah, it's something personal. All that Jesus has done is personal. It's not, yes, it's for everybody, but unless you actually receive it, unless you take it, it doesn't become real to you. You have to take that. You have to say, I believe that Jesus has died and that actually he saved me and also that I can be healed in his name. You know, earlier on, it was very great to see God bring those words of knowledge that Henry shared about different things, different illnesses and and diseases. And if that's you and you've been healed, share your testimony because God is in the business of healing our bodies. Emotional health, God is interested in it. Mental health, God is interested in it. Physical health, God is interested in it. He made us, he's interested in every aspect of us. So there's salvation. The second thing, heavenly citizenship. Wow. This is awesome. You know what people pay to get different passports? Now some of you would understand this, okay? So the purple passport, you know what people will do to get the purple passport? You know what people will do to have those different passports? Because there is something that comes with citizenship, isn't it? You enjoy the benefits of being a citizen of that nation. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah we're enjoying the benefits of being citizens, aren't we? Yeah? You have a legal right to a lot of things when you are a citizen of that country. In fact, you can you know, kind of go for elections. You can even become the president if you are a citizen of that country. No country is going to allow someone who isn't a citizen to become the president of their country, okay? So heavenly citizenship, and why do I say that? Because Jesus is not just savior, he is king. Remember, he is Christ, the anointed one. He is the Messiah. So yes, he didn't do what they thought he was going to do, which was to sort of release Israel physically at the time. But actually, the freedom that he brings from sin is even greater than anything else. But even in that, he came to establish God's kingdom here on earth. Now, let's read this scripture because it will, be, it will just, I'll read the first one and then we'll read the second one together. So the first one is 1 Peter 1, 3 to 5. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved where? Reserved where? In heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. 21, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. We are not just citizens on earth. Every one of you now, can I announce to you, you are a dual citizen, yeah? In case you never thought you had another passport, you have another passport and the kingdom is called the kingdom of heaven, yeah? So you are a citizen of heaven. Let's read the second one together, Philippians 3.20. All right, let's do that together. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies 
so that they will be like his glorious body. Hallelujah. 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 You know, whatever your body looks like now, whatever it looks like, you may love it, you may hate it. In fact, they say that a lot of us have one thing or the other we don't particularly like about our bodies. Yeah? In fact, someone might be looking at you and saying how great you look, and yet you're saying to them, ooh, but you don't know. That. You know, we don't even receive the compliment because we think there's something wrong. But whatever body we have, isn't it great to know that one day we're going to have a totally different body, a glorious body. Six pack, <laughs> Henry says. Okay. <laughs> we're going to have a totally different body. And what is special about that body is that it's not subject to any of this stuff we go through. Pain, sickness, disease. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be a glorious body body. And that's because we are heavenly citizens. It means that we're free. It means that we can also exercise dominion. Remember when God made Adam and Eve, he says, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Yeah, sin, try to change that. But as God's children, I want us to also remember when we celebrate his resurrection, that it means that we can exercise that dominion. We can walk in freedom because of what Jesus has done for us. Amen. Amen. And the third thing is that we are now with a divine commission. And that commission is that we are ambassadors of Christ. Amen. Amen. So Jesus died and he is alive and it means we are saved. We can be saved from sin and we can be healed in our body. Jesus died and he is alive and because of that we are now heavenly citizens, which means that we can exercise the authority that he has. Jesus died and he's alive and he has given us a commission and he's saying, I want you to be my ambassador. Because remember, he's a king. He has authority and a dominion. In Matthew 28, I'm just going to read particularly verse 18. He says, Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That's a powerful statement. All authority. All. So there's none left for the enemy. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. The devil fakes things. He parades as if he's a liar, but he's not. God has given Jesus the name above every other name. Now, 19, what does he say? Go and make disciples of all nations. That's the commission. On a day like this, it may be that you're here and you don't know Jesus or it may not necessarily be that you don't know Jesus. Maybe you've been on a journey, but you're not, you've not quite made a commitment. Or maybe you used to know the Lord. You used to you know, be fervent. And things have happened in life that have made you grow a bit cold. His desire is that all the earth will be filled with the knowledge of who he is. He wants everybody to be saved. Look at what he says in 2 Corinthians 5. And I'm, I'm going to read verse 20 in particular. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So Jesus has died, but he's alive. And that's why we celebrate. We celebrate salvation. We celebrate our heavenly citizenship. We celebrate the fact that we're ambassadors. Because Revelation 7, and I think I, I put this up quite a lot so you'll be familiar with this scripture, Revelation 7, 9 to 10. It gives me hope. It always brings a smile to my face when I see this scripture. It says, after this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every tribe, well, nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Amen. I want to be one of those people. I want to be one of them. I want to be singing the song of worship to the king. 
So to conclude, Jesus died and he's alive, but resurrection power has been unleashed for us. And if you're a beneficiary, I, when I use the word beneficiary, it just reminds me of with law, you know, we talk about the beneficiary of a will, you know. But if you're a beneficiary of his power, you're saved. A heavenly citizen. You exercise dominion on earth. What that means is that you exercise authority on earth. And you are an ambassador of Christ. So you may say to me, Rachel, this is all great, what you're saying, but how... How, how can this happen? How can I enjoy these benefits? It's very simple. Romans 10, 9 and 10 talks about us believing in our heart. Yeah? So we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. We believe in our heart that God raised him up from the dead. And the Bible says we will be saved. In Luke 11, it says that if we can give good gifts to our children, how much more will God give the Holy Spirit if we ask him? So I end by saying, ask, believe, and receive today. Not tomorrow, not next week, today. Because today is a day of salvation. Why don't you bow your heads? Um, I invite the worship team just to play. Let's bow our heads for a moment and we're going to pray Resurrection power has been unleashed. But as I said, it's very personal. It's very personal. It depends on how we receive it. So we we'll bow our heads now and just talk to God for one minute. Just, I don't know what has stood out for you in what I've said. Maybe you've been reminded again of what Jesus has done and you just want to praise him and say, thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Maybe you're sick in your body and you're saying, Lord, I want you to bring healing to me today. Or maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you're new or, or you, you've not yet committed. Then today can be the day of salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody, just as we carry on, just buying our heads in prayer, is there anybody here that wants to make a decision for Jesus? So either you've never done that before, or maybe you used to be a Christian, but things have happened and have, you know, you've kind of walked away, and you want to come back. You want to say yes to Jesus again. If you just lift your hands where you are, and the stewards will hand you a, a pack just so that we can get. So if you just lift your hand where you are, thank you for that hand. God sees you and we see you. If there are any other hands, just lift your hand where you are and the stewards will be around with a pack to give to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I surrender all. I One more time, I surrender. I, I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. Oh, to Thee, my blessed Savior. Lord, I thank you for the hand that was raised, O oh God, to receive you as Lord. Thank you, thank you, because the Bible says that there is rejoicing in heaven Amen. over one sinner that comes to repentance. There is rejoicing in heaven and on earth. We can't but rejoice as well and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, today. We welcome our brother into the kingdom. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
thank you, Father. We worship your name. And Lord, I pray, I ask, Lord, as we've been talking about just the life through the resurrection of Jesus, may we walk in that. May we walk in the freedom. For any that is sick, may we have that healing that comes in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Your word is life and your word is health. And I just pray a blessing on everyone that has heard this word today. May it continue to speak life into us as we carry on declaring who you are on the streets this afternoon. Blessed be your name, Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.